before we can have a proper panel discussion about the metaverse, we have to spend a few minutes talking. So they won't know. I wanted to call this What the Fuck is the Metaverse? I thought it was a much better title. But, but there are sensibilities that we have to attend to around this sort of thing. So we have to spend a few minutes talking about what the metaverse is before we can have a discussion about it. So I just, I just picked one random example just to illustrate the point. So this is digital transactions from last month. And I thought they phrased it very nicely. So they said, we're going to look into the metaverse because this is the next place. This is for payments, for transactions, for like this is a whole new, and it is, of course, but we're not quite sure what it is, which is a bit of a circle to square, I think, in some cases. They said, if you're not exactly sure what it is and how commerce will work, you're far from alone. So here is my very bold claim for this session, which is I bet most of the people in the audience, if I pushed you, you probably couldn't say what the metaverse is. I'm not going to make you do it. I'm just a thought experiment. Because I saw a survey that said, I think the survey, it said like, I don't know, 50, I don't know where it was, McKinsey, I can't remember, or chat GPT, I can't remember. It said 50% of people uh, know what the metaverse is, but only 5% of them will explain it to the person next to them because they don't really know what it is. And that's, I feel like that's our starting point. So I'm going to make a bold claim. You can, you can hold me to account for this at the end of the session. But before the panel starts, not only are you going to know what the metaverse is, I promise you, you'll be able to explain it to your boss. Now, I know that's a high bar for a lot of the people in this room but I'm prepared to take that challenge on board. I'm telling you, in 15 minutes time, you're gonna know what the metaverse is and you're gonna be able to explain it to your boss, possibly even your boss's boss. Is that, well, maybe not your boss's boss, but certainly your boss. I mean, let's not, let's not run before we can walk. So what's the metaverse? Hmm. So we rather like the Financial Times definition. So the Financial Times, and who am I to argue with the Financial Times, really? So the Financial Times said, there's really three parts to the metaverse. There's virtual worlds where transactions can take place. There are um, some sort of assets, some sort of digital assets that can be moved around to, to form the transactions. And there's some sort of uh, identities that can own these assets. You have to have all three of these components, otherwise you don't really have a metaverse. Like if you have assets but you don't know who owns them, that doesn't really work. That's not a proper market. You've got to have all three of these components. And I think that's a mimetic echo of what Jaron Lanier used to talk about when he first began talking about virtual worlds and so on. When he talked about economic avatars, and I rather like that phrasing of it. So if we're talking about transactions in the metaverse, we're talking about interactions between economic avatars. I think that's a, that's a, that's a, very, it's a very good phrasing. If you, if, you can't own, if you can't own stuff, you don't, have a, you don't have a proper market, and therefore there's no business that we're interested in. You, ha you have to have both things. You have to have the avatars, but they have to be able to own things. Otherwise, it's not a realistic space. So first of all, let's talk about virtual worlds. So, that's a bit naughty. This is one of my all-time favorite pictures. That's, that's Mark Zuckerberg, the chap that runs Facebook and so on, um, at Mobile World Congress a few years ago. And so they made every put, they made every put all, all the people in the audience had the virtual reality goggles on, except for Mark Zuckerberg. And I just, you know, you know, alien civilizations investigating the ruins of our civilization in the future will find this picture and they'll probably see that as like a turning point where where things actually finally went wrong so i treasure that picture and here's a picture from this morning disney lays off its entire metaverse team and so <laughs> looking at twitter thinking, hmm. so people in the audience are going to be thinking why are we here, here talking about the metaverse when disney has laid off its entire metaverse team But why would you expect Disney to be able to invent the metaverse? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, Facebook didn't invent Twitter. Twitter didn't invent TikTok. Netscape didn't invent Facebook. Microsoft didn't invent Netscape. Digital equipment didn't invent personal... You see, you see what I mean? Like, why would we think 
that Disney would be the people to invent the metaverse. That's very lazy. And the reason why we think this is because a lot of the comment about virtual worlds is about games, that kind of environment. So when I, when I say virtual, like when, when you think of virtual world in business terms, what you should be thinking about is a shared experiential space. It doesn't even necessarily have to be visual. There's a lot of work, go like we're all at home, you know, in a kind of audio metaverse at the moment, all day long with our iPods in at the moment, um, you know, our, our AirPods in at the moment. Like if, when I'm walking around the house, I'm actually in a shared virtual space with Claire and Tim. That's a virtual world. You know, if you think about it only as, oh, well, the commerce in virtual worlds, that's, that's us in Call of Duty selling each other insurance. I think you're sort of slightly missing the point about where this is going. So stop thinking about virtual worlds as, you know, Grand Theft Auto or something. That's not the, and that's why, you know, like why would Disney be able to think about that? That doesn't make any sense. So the first point is virtual worlds are shared experiences, immersive shared experiences, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know, 3D goggles and, you know, feeling sick in Fortnite, which is what happens to me when I do it. The second component is the digital assets. So here's my all-time favorite digital asset. That's, that's Jack Dorsey's first tweet, which was converted into an NFT. No, I don't know why either. That's not the point. I know it's stupid, but, but the point is this is what the kids are doing. So we have to sort of look in on that. Jack Dorsey's first tweet turned into an NFT. It was sold for $2.9 million to some poor sucker who just recently sold it for $280. It's like, so like bought it for, bought it for 2.9 million, sold it for 280. The sort of like world pay kind of thing to, to help the audience here understand. I'm, I'm sorry about that joke. I shouldn't have done that. I apologize. I apologize unreservedly. I was trying to make it real for this audience. And, you know, some of them have limited scope. So, <clears throat> so when I say digital assets, you're thinking about pictures of chimpanzees with sunglasses on and a variety of celebrities who I, I actually I'd literally never heard of any of them but they're all going to jail for shilling this stuff uh, in violation of SEC rules and so on. That's not digital assets. That's people mucking about with NFTs and rooking the general public last year. Digital assets are institutionally linked to the real world. Tokens. The guy that runs BlackRock, Larry Fink, said a couple, uh, by the way, you should listen to him because unlike me, he's a billionaire and has $7 trillion of assets under management. And he's not prone to mucking about in Call of Duty and so on. Larry Fink said, essentially, we're going to tokenize everything. So why are people like that crazy about digital assets when digital assets appear to be pictures of chimpanzees with sunglasses on? Well, the answer is... The reason why those people are going to tokenize digital assets is because they want to be able to trade digital assets without clearing and settlement. Quite simple to understand. If I sell Claire a share in Apple, that involves all sorts of mucking about. You know, market makers and broker dealers and delivery versus payment and settlement and front office and back office and reconciliation, all these other things. But if I send... Claire an Apple token, it goes from my wallet to her wallet, end of. That's why these people want to trade tokens. And how do you trade tokens? You trade tokens through sets of protocols which we call DeFi, decentralized finance. Why do we want to do it like that? Because we want to trade using those protocols that can exchange digital assets as efficiently as possible in a programmable fashion. So however skeptical you are about cryptocurrency, and by the way, any reference I make to cryptocurrency is for entertainment purposes only. Can we be very clear about that? It's not an inducement to buy any particular security or class of securities. So if you're skeptical about cryptocurrency, I completely agree. You shouldn't be skeptical about tokenization and decentralized finance. 
because that's where the serious money people are looking. So they're looking at an environment where you trade digital assets through these protocols. And we've begun to label that Web3, broadly speaking. So if you're wondering what Web3 is, Web3 is essentially digital asset tokens being traded through decentralized finance protocols. Then we come to digital identity. And digital identity, oh yeah, that's how I forgot I was using this. This is my moment of fame. Digital identity. My ID, this is on Instagram, right? I get a message from a friend of mine that says, is this you? And he sends me this message, which is me telling him, hey, have you thought about investing in this cryptocurrency? I won't tell you which one. And I'm like, what are you in? First of all, I would never send you a message asking you to invest in cryptocurrency. And secondly, if you were thinking of taking financial advice from me, you should be sectioned under the Mental Health Act for your own protection. That was my reply to him. So, and it turns out someone had copied my, oh, it's pointed as well, but can you see, it's, they've, they've put an extra, so someone had copied my Instagram account and copied all of the photos of it and copied my icon over to it and created a completely bogus Instagram account in order to try and sell people cryptocurrency. And I was like, yes, this is, I've made it. Like I'm a, seriously, I'm, has your Instagram account been copied? No, it hasn't. I'm somebody, basically. You're the general public. I'm an influencer. And I've, I've got the evidence. I, I was counterfeited. You weren't counterfeited. I've got concrete proof that I'm worth counterfeiting. I want to make an NFT of that. Things, things are get a little bit recursive then. Turtles all the way down. So. But this is the bit that's missing. This is what's wrong. We have virtual worlds that have the potential to be shared immersive experiences. And we have the uh, digital assets and Web3 we need to trade. The bit that's missing is the digital identity, the avatars. But you know there are people working on this right now. There were rumors sweeping the building yesterday of a European digital identity wallet. So I'm assuming that problem's solved. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. So if you put those three things together, this is the picture that you need for your boss. What is the metaverse? The metaverse is those three things. It's the virtual worlds, it's Web3, and it's digital identity. And just for the technically minded in the audience, I'll just translate that for you. So when I say virtual worlds and Web3, I'm talking about digital objects, right? So what does Web3 deliver into those virtual worlds? Digital objects, objects that can be owned that turns them into property. What does digital identity provide into virtual worlds? It provides credentials. We're all about credentials. Remember, it's not who you are, it's what you are. Because we believe in privacy, right? We believe in, in the European ideals of privacy and private transactions, which if any of you are coming to the ECB talk about CBDC a bit later on, we'll circle back around to that point a bit later on. And thirdly, we have the digital identity provided to Web3, which it needs, which as you all know is the private keys. So for the technically minded, we're talking about private keys, we're talking about public keys, we're talking about ledgers. And the good news about that is we, we, you, all the people in the audience, know how to implement that stuff. We know how to implement all of that. We know how to do public keys and digital signatures and credentials and W3s. Like, this is great, because we know about how all that stuff works. I don't want to talk about the different services here. And if you fill in the missing bit in the middle, you can see where I'm going with this. So what's the bit in the middle that links all of these things together? Where are you going to store your private keys? Where are you going to store the credentials that you need to access? Where are you going to store the digital objects? And we all know that the answer is wallets. And I hope you picked up the point that I was annoying the panel with yesterday morning, which is in the general case, if you're looking in a three to five year strategic horizon, this is the kind of, this is the kind of range that our clients are looking at for strategy. If you're looking at that three to five year horizon, remember, most of those wallet transactions will be controlled by agents, not by you. Because most of this stuff is boring. Like, do you really want to okay 
yeah, please, can you do my Netflix? No, of course not. You want robots to do that for you because it's boring. So it's all about wallets. And most of the time, those wallets are going to be responding to smart agents, not to people. OK. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to go for it. Look, I don't know if you want to have a look around, Claire, and see whether you're going to fire me or not. But if you think you can tell your boss what the metaverse is now, can you please put your hand up? Please put your hand up if you think you can tell your boss. Where, OK, I give up. That's it. Done. Uh, I'm going to give you one worked example to prove that this stuff isn't crap. So a few years ago, we were hired by Intel to look at some potential you know, tokenization uh, ideas, blockchain ideas, most of which were you know, whatever. But the one that really made sense, and I think it's the one that crystallizes the metaverse example for you, is event ticketing. Event ticketing is the perfect example because an event ticket itself is the perfect example of an NFT. So I had an NFT. Why is it a perfect example? Because there's only one of them, right? An event ticket, you're not supposed to be able to copy them and give them to your mates. That leads to no end of trouble, right? The point about an event ticket is there's one of them. And if I send my ticket to go and see Motorhead to Claire, that's a bad example because they're all dead. All right, I'll think of a different one. If I send Claire my ticket to go and see, you know, insert name of pop star here. I don't know any. Who's a, who's a famous... Um, What's, what's the guy in Norwich? Uh, Ed Sheeran, that's right. Okay. So if I'm going to sell, if I'm going to sell my ticket to go and see Ed Sheeran to Claire, then I don't send her a copy of the ticket. Like you know what I mean? Like I transfer the ticket from me to. That's an NFT. It goes from my wallet. So it's a perfect example. And then it overlays the metaverse with the real world because I could go to that concert in the metaverse if it's being organised in the metaverse. Or if it's in the real world, I show up, and if I've got possession of the ticket, what that translates to for the more technically minded, if I can demonstrate strong authentication that shows that I have control of the private key, I can get in to see the concert. If I can't do strong authentication that demonstrates control of the private key, I can't get into the concert, end of. So if you want a practical example, so okay, so you can't explain it to your boss, but maybe you could explain it to your boss if you talk about Ed Sheeran and tickets and exchanging digital assets, i.e. money, for other digital assets, i.e. tickets, and then using those tickets in both the metaverse and the real world to try and get something done. And just as evidence of my dedication to the company and the fact that I will do literally anything to get Consult Hyperion on stage in front of you, that's a picture of me going to see a slam poetry contest in Catford. See, I'll do anything. Thanks very much, Francesco.